Hey everybody, Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team for our next installment of our video blog and podcast, Around Town Real Estate. I'm here with Sean Scanlon again. Sean, hey, it's a pleasure. Good to see you again. You know, good to see you again. You know, I've been sitting here. If you guys don't re realize this, we're wearing the same clothes. It's because we, <laughs> we film these back to back, and you know why not? Uh, Sean's a busy man, but again, I appreciate you taking the time out Happy to join to us. Um, our last podcast, which you guys would have seen a couple weeks ago at this point. Um, talked about the current state of affairs of Connecticut real estate. And Sean sits on the committee um, and heads the committee in the assembly on real estate here in the state of Connecticut. And today I want to talk about the future sure. of real estate in Connecticut, some of the challenges you might be facing, but more importantly, some of the things you guys are trying to do to turn that ship around over the foreseeable future and, and, uh, and longer here in Connecticut. So yeah. Sean, let's just jump right in. Tell me a little bit about maybe, I think we talked about three things before that you guys are working on with the realtors in the state to... Um, both protect consumers as well as enhance opportunities. Yeah, you know, so I chair the Insurance and Real Estate Committee in the state legislature, and it's my job to try to protect consumers, but also to help the industry grow. Sure. And so this year we sat down and we came up with three bills that we thought would, would do both things. Um, the first one creates a first time home buyer's tax credit, which we can get into more. The second one has to make sure that when you are selling a home that might have pyrotite in it, if, if your listeners are familiar, pyrotite is a, is a mineral that is causing massive amounts of problems in the eastern part of the state when it comes to real estate. Almost 34,000 homes are affected by this. This is, this is the foundation, the concrete crumbling and the foundation. poor foundation are crumbling. I think it's a Tolan County is highly affected. Tolan County, um, you know, Wyndham County. Yeah. We're talking about whole neighborhoods of towns are just devastated by yeah. this. It is devastating to those and, areas. And we're talking tens of thousands if, need, if not more to repair these jack the homes up for foundations. I mean, all depending on the it's about scope 200, of it. It's about 200,000 per house. That's what it is. Yes, and we have taken big steps in state government to create pools of money for this, um, but it's nowhere near enough to, to solve this problem. And we are gonna, these towns are devastated by this. We have to get a hold of this. But what we want to make sure is that nobody who maybe has come out of state to come in to take a job at the insurance industry in Hartford, they're looking to buy a house in yeah. Holland. They, they buy the house and they realize, oh my God, I have this. And it's, I just inherited this. I just inherited albatross. this. Mess. So what the bill basically says is that you cannot sell a house to somebody without disclosing the fact that your house has this problem. Um, and the third and last one is to make it easier for people to get their real estate license. Um, we need to make anything easier to get a job in Connecticut. Sure. Uh, a lot of people in our generation live online, um, but you can't right For now, better or worse. For better or worse, yeah. but you can't right now take a real estate course online right now to get your real estate license. This would make us able to do that. Okay. And these are three simple steps that I think can help Connecticut get on a better path when it comes to real estate. So let's go back to the first one. Yeah. We talked about the first time home buyer tax credit. Sure. Um, we're, and I want to I jump into some other things that we're hearing, but talk to me about that one. How is that employed? This obviously is past committee. This is going in for final vote. Yep. Correct. In the not too distant future. Yep. Absolutely. So and, and, and the amount of the credit is and how can it be used? 34% of people of home sales in the state of Connecticut were first time home buyers last big, year. Absolutely. Big number. Um, I'm, I'm one of them a couple of years ago. My wife and I bought our first house nice. here in Guilford. Um, it's great. It's the American dream, right? But it is very hard for some people, especially with the amount of college debt that they're coming out of. Absolutely. Um, so we want to make it easier for them. We want to make it easier to sell Connecticut. And this would do that by allowing them to set up a first time home buyers account in the bank or financial institution of their choice. And then they would get a tax deduction every year um, it, the, that you're choosing of $5,000 dollars per individual or ten thousand dollars per couple over the lifetime of that home buyer savings account just to clarify uh, it's, it's not it's not five thousand or ten thousand per year no it's, it's a total deduction of correct. five to ten you can take it all in one fell swoop or one-on-one -on -one. depending what your financial situation is. that's yep. great yeah i mean that's, listen at the end of the day you're going to save money but i tell you what i love about that sean it's connecticut thinking outside the box sure that's you guys are saying hey how can how can we help some folks yep to get in the, in, the, in the homes. Yep. Now, I can't tell you how many first time home buyers, it's a challenge, right? It's very expensive to buy a home. People think, oh, I only need X saved for my down payment, but then you need another 1500 for your inspection. Yep. And you've got your closing costs, you've got your tax escrows, and all of a sudden what you thought you had saved, you need 50% more. And so doing something like that is, is very forward thinking. And only it. nine other states have this right now. So really? we would be in the top tier of the country. And I think, again, that makes us attractive. And there are things here in Connecticut that make us attractive. This could be one of them. Well, and that goes back to our last podcast. It's about messaging. Yeah. Right? It's that we are trying to find ways to make it easier to live here, to attract businesses to come here. Um, and that's, that's wonderful. I want to go back to the messaging. I want to talk about the marketing of Connecticut. But sure. first, I want to jump into a question that we get asked a lot. I said, it's fear inducing. Say, Andy, I hear the government's going to pass a buyer conveyance tax. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. So I hope not. 
Um, I really, I really hope not. I think that it's been proposed. It's been proposed in the past years. Yeah. I and others have stepped up and tried to stop that from happening because anything that we do to inhibit growth at this point in Connecticut, I think is the wrong move. Yeah. We need to be doing the opposite. We need to be doing the first time home buyer's tax credit. We need to be waving flags at the border well, saying, come to Connecticut. It's also mixed messaging. If you're saying, Hey, we want to encourage you to buy with the tax credit. Oh, when you buy, right. we're going to charge you a percent. <clears throat> right. So, to, so for us to make it more expensive to buy a home at the time that we're also trying to make it less expensive is it's mixed you're just canceling. Yeah, it's just absolutely. stupid. Absolutely. Um, so I hope not. I, I hope that the powers that be in the state, when it comes to the governor, the legislative leaders, will listen to folks like me, um, listen to folks like you, and say, "Listen, not the right time to do this. Yeah. Um, let's let's try to focus on growth." I, I mean, I love the word growth, and it's fantastic. And it comes back to that messaging. So, talk to me a little bit more about some of the messaging you guys are trying to get out about the state of Connecticut. Talk to me about some of the larger projects that you're you're trying to push through that I yeah. think were really fascinating. You know, we are nestled between Boston, Massachusetts, and Manhattan, two of the largest economic hubs in the world. Yep. And we can't find a way to service these guys? Yeah. What is wrong with us? Yeah, so I think we have to we have to focus on that. And whenever I go to visit a business in my district, I always start by saying, what can I do for you? And, and so everyone knows, you serve which district? I serve Guilford and Brantford. So the okay. towns of Guilford and Brantford, we're outside of New Haven, which is, I think, a, an engine of growth in the state of Connecticut. It has to be. It has to be. Um, and there are things like Tweed Airport, for example, that when I go to these businesses, they don't really necessarily talk about taxes or regulations. They talk about things that would make their life easier and make it more for them to for them. Grow, for them to grow their Correct. business. And so, so, so Tweed is. So, so listen, we got an airport called Tweed Airport. Most people don't even know about it because it's not a busy airport. They only have three flights a day out of there to one place, to Philadelphia. And the reason for that is because in 2009, and it's prop jets. It's not. It's not full jet service. They're not full jet service. Yeah. They're they're smaller passenger jets where you probably get 20 people on it. Right. Um, but the reason for that is because in 2009, some legislators passed a law that limited their runway by 1,500 feet. And the reason for that is because with 1,500 more feet, they can get bigger planes in there. It's not something that they have to do eminent domain. It doesn't go outside their neighbor. It's in there right away. Oh, we have the space. We have the space. Um, it's in there right away. It's just paving 1,500 more feet of a runway. Um, repealing that law would be so enormously helpful to the people of Connecticut and specifically this region because right now the fact that Tweed is where it is is holding back economic growth in our region. And so the, these leaders of these businesses that we have that either are, we're talking to try to entice them to come here or leaders of business that are here now want that because? Well, because look, if, if I'm a biotech business in Brantford, which we have a big number of, and I'm trying to woo a client, I have to right now tell them to fly to Bradley International Airport in Windsor Locks, get in a rental car, drive on I-91, get stuck in traffic, drive on I-95, get stuck in traffic, and then finally get to my business, and then I'm supposed to sell them on how great Connecticut is? No, that's not going to work like that. Yeah, it's true. But if I can have somebody fly into an airport that's 10 minutes away from my business, get in a car, or better yet, get on Shoreline East, the railway line, yep. come to my business, they are going to see a Connecticut that looks more like Boston or New York and not like the middle of nowhere. That is what we need to do. We need to give off the impression that this is a place that is primed for success and growth. And government's messaging is a big part of that. We can't talk about all the doom and gloom. We have problems in Connecticut. Nobody's trying to sugarcoat those. Absolutely. We also have great possibility. And it's our job as Democrats, as Republicans, as Connecticut leaders to get together and try to figure out the ways that we can make this place grow. I mean, I, I love that thought process, and so it's, it's going to be a long turnaround. But you're right, you know, showing these businesses um, that we're welcome to you and to serve your needs. And listen, it's a fast-paced world out there, and, and businesses and these biotech businesses are even faster. And they need to be able to get in and get out, and they need to be able to show that to their clients or whomever they're trying to attract here that we are welcoming to you. And it's it's I assume the and of course, listen, I wouldn't want to live in a flight path of a. Uh, of a large jet landing over my house. And I assume that's why this law is in place to protect the homes around there and the you know quote unquote quality of life for the people. So I get that. But at the end of the day, we have to make really hard decisions that not everybody's gonna like. Um, and I assume politics plays a lot into this, right? You've, you've got folks probably representing those people who count on their votes to stay in office, who are you know gonna fight this repeal of law, correct? Yeah, but you know yeah. what? Um, I, I'm a firm believer that anybody can get in a room no matter how far apart they might be ideologically and find a solution. Sure. Um, and it's what we do in our homes. You know, we're both married, you know, we don't agree with our wives every day on everything. Um, but if we sit down and actually talk it through as adults, we can find this out sure. on the tweed situation. There are things that they can do and that they have been doing to mitigate the noise in people's houses. They're willing to spend the money to actually soundproof people's houses so that that impact doesn't have a, an impact on as them. Much of but what, 
not doing anything just because it's challenging is not the way that we should approach government. We need to do big, bold things to turn this place around. And we can't just say, well, it's difficult because these people are going to be upset. We have to find solutions for those people so we can find solutions for all people. Okay, so we're talking infrastructure. Obviously, Connecticut needs help with infrastructure. The airport is one of them. There's other issues. Turn to other things. What, what else are we looking at for attracting business to Connecticut or stabilizing the businesses that we have? Well, I think Connecticut's greatest selling point is what we have going for us. You mentioned at the top of things. We have great schools. We have great beaches. We have great parks. We have a great culture here. There's a lot of opportunity for Qual- Quality of life is still tremendous. Quality of life know. is high. I mean, when you go to sell a house or when any of my friends who are realtors go to sell a house, it's all about location, right? Absolutely. Um, and so if you have a great location, whether it's Guilford, Newtown, anywhere in the state of Connecticut, you can sell. Sure. Right? But there are things that would give people pause about buying a house here if their offer is Cambridge, Massachusetts, or Guilford, Connecticut. Absolutely. We need to stop that from being the case. We need to make sure that Guilford, it's never going to be Cambridge, we're never going to be Boston, but we can have opportunity. And when you pair opportunity with the incredible quality of life we have, I have absolute confidence that Connecticut could be one of the top five states in the country in terms of greatness in terms of so I'm going to push you a little bit because yeah. that that that, that, that was a little that, that was a little political of an answer yeah. and I don't blame you for it yeah but how do we create opportunity well I'll, I'll give you go back to that example of if we sit down and actually talk to people as I'm trying to do it's small changes that lead up to big things right it's Tweed Airport it's the estate tax for example that is a tax that does not raise a ton of money Right. I think it's about, and, and it creates a lot of flight out of state. But it creates a lot of flight out of state, right? And ideologically, a lot of my friends on my side of the aisle, the Democratic Party, don't want to get rid of the estate tax. But guess what? If there's 15 men and women in the state of Connecticut that have the capacity to pay 30 to 40% of our entire income tax revenue, and they can leave at the drop of a hat because of this estate tax, it's the one they go every time they go to their accountant, the guy says, You're an idiot for staying right. here. Time, here. Time to go south. Time to go south. Yeah. That is one small change that we can make. It's not a lot of money, but it will make a significant impact on people's psychological Absolutely. thoughts about Connecticut. Absolutely. So whether we're talking tweed, we're talking the estate tax, we're just talking small regulations, right? If I go into a business and they say, listen, I have to mop the floors three times a day just because of this law. Well, does it have to be three? Can it be two? I don't know, but let's look into this and let's try to solve these things individually. So um, I gave you a political answer, but the real answer is this, which is that I think that it's got to be about listening. I don't have all the answers. Sure. I know how to pass laws. You might know how to make widgets. You know how to sell houses. Everyone knows how to do something. Sure. But the people who know how to do something that can help us grow have to come to me and other colleagues of mine and say, this is what we need to do. Get out of our way or be our partner and right. let's go forward. Let, let, let us grow. Yeah, let yeah. us grow. I'll tell you, I, I think you know, the estate tax is a great example because it's, it's not a lot of money. But it's perception. Yeah. It's perception that while Connecticut is, if we can get rid of something like that, Connecticut is trying to become tax friendly again. Connecticut is trying to become retiree friendly again. And and you're right. And some of the people might stand up, you know what? I'm gonna stay. That's tremendous. Yeah. That's tremendous. And you know, then I know those folks that are selling the family home, they're not downsizing to Florida, they're just downsizing locally. Maybe they're buying them a retirement, you know, community in the beach in Guilford or, yeah. or they're downside in one of our cities for, you know, kind of, you know, whatever life that offers or what yeah. have you. You're, you know what? It, it's kind of, you've shifted my mindset, you know, into it's a lot of small things can be done to change perception. That comes down to branding and marketing. And it's not just the 1% either. The estate tax would sure. certainly help some, some big rich guys, but we got to help the little guy too. And last year, two years ago, we passed a bill that would eliminate the tax on social security and retirement income. For seniors, that is a That's big huge. deal. That right? is huge. That, that is a big deal. They've already been taxed on that once. They shouldn't be taxed on it again. We repealed it, right? That was because we listened to people that came to us and said, this is causing me to want to leave Connecticut. Yeah. And so again, we just have to find ways to listen to people and actually be responsive. And if we do that, I think we can really turn this place around. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you joining me again. There's, You've got lots of work to do. we got to get you out of here so you can go do it. <laughs> Um, get those little things done. Yeah. Let's change perception of Connecticut. So when we're sitting here 20 years from now, you know, we can look back and, and kind of be proud, more proud of where we live and, and, and that people aren't flying out of here and, and this becomes a destination again. So again, Sean Scanlon, representative in the assembly in the state of Connecticut. My name is Andy Sachs with Coldwell Banker and the Around Town team. I appreciate you joining us and we'll talk to you soon. Good to be here. Thanks, man.